Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo, and I'm here once again to share the Open Heavens Daily Devotional with you. Now, the Open Heavens Daily Devotional that I'm sharing is this one that is compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. Now, if you've, you're visiting my channel for the very first time or you know it personally, just to let you know that the reason I'm sharing this is because as I prepare to enter into 2020, the Lord instructed me to begin to share this particular daily devotional. So I shared in 2020 and in 2021, and I resume sharing from the month of July as God instructed me in this year, 2022. Now, all those videos they are from 2020 are all loaded on my YouTube channel. I think I have about 400 videos by the grace of God. And uh, my handle on YouTube is Temi Agedo. Temi Agedo. I will encourage you to visit my channel. You know, while you're on there, please do subscribe and view the, view the, view the videos, and they will definitely be a blessing. Now, Pastor Adeboye, he led me to Christ in October 1997, a few years back when I was an undergraduate in the University of Lagos in Nigeria, in West Africa. And Pastor Adeboye's unique style of teaching is that he will give you a few scriptures from the Bible, he will give you a memory verse. And when you combine those two pieces of scripture, it helps you to understand the body of the text and, you know, what the Spirit of God is saying to the person who is reading the daily devotional on that particular day. Praise God. So today is the last day of November 2022. And we thank God for bringing us thus far. The Bible says, better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof. And we thank God for this high privilege. Blessed be the name of our Lord God who has brought us thus far. Amen. So today, uh, Wednesday, November the 30th, the title of today's daily devotional is Dealing with Destiny Killers Part 3. Dealing with Destiny Killers Part 3. So from last Sunday, Pastor began to teach us about understanding destiny. And then from Monday, we started a three-day series titled Dealing with Destiny Killers. So we have dealt with part, part 1 and Part 2 and Part 3. And you know, yesterday, Pastor was telling us that one of the destiny killers, that's in part two, that one of the destiny killers is pride. On Monday, he talked to us about laziness and I had procrastin procrastination. And today, Pastor is going to be picking up on the love of money, understanding, dealing with destiny killer, part three. Now, I will encourage you to start from Sunday because understanding destiny which we taught which we shared on sunday is a foundation to this three-part series and i know that you will be blessed in the name of our lord jesus christ and by the spirit of our god amen so dealing with destiny killers part three and we are going to be reading from a very popular verse in the bible which many of us have heard many times first timothy chapter six first timothy chapter six and we are going to be looking at uh, 1 Timothy 6 from verses 10 to 12, just three verses. Now, 1 Timothy 6 verses 10 to 12. For me to do real justice to this piece of work in a short time, I'm going to read from the traditional King James, verse, traditional King James Version first. Now, like I said, you know this verse. It says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after... They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, O woman of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So people said money is the root of all evil. It's not true. Amen. The Bible says that the love of money, the love of money, God is saying through Paul that the love of money is the root of all evil. And that some people, because they are, that is what they are, that is their aim in life. They love money. It has become a sneer unto them. And it, that love of, of money, that spirit of mammon has pursued them so much, it has led to problem. You know, some, some people think that, oh, I just need a rich woman, a rich girl, or a rich man to marry. You know, and then they marry the man or the woman for her money. Not only for them to make their own money in future, and then there's no more attraction. And that's the end of the marriage. You know, the love of money. You know, Delilah loved her nation, but she also loved money. Be careful of a man or a woman that loves money. It says, but that woman of God, so he's talking to the body of Christ. He says, flee these things. Instead, 
Don't follow after money. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Let's read it from another translation. Praise God. Um, I just need to share this with you so I can know I've done a good job. Um, easy to read version. The love of money causes all kinds of evil. Some people have turned away from what we believe because they want to get more, more and more money. But they have caused themselves a lot of pain and sorrow. But you belong to God, so you should stay away from all these things. Always try to do what is right, to be devoted to God, and to have faith, love, patience, and gentleness. We have to fight to keep our faith. Take hold of eternal life. It is the life you were chosen to have when you confessed your faith in Jesus Christ. In Jesus, that wonderful truth that you spoke so openly and that so many people heard. Let me just take the Amplified translation the amp says for the love of money that is the greedy desire for it and the willingness to gain it unethically is a root of all sorts of evil and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves through and through with many sorrows but as for you O man of god flee from these things aim at and pursue righteousness which is the goodness and the moral conformity to the character of god godliness the fear of god faith love and steadfastness and gentleness fight the good fight of faith in the conflict with evil take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession of faith in the presence of many weaknesses hallelujah may the lord bless the reading of his word okay i have to move on because of time so destiny killers dealing with destiny killers part three and the memory verse is also taken from amongst the, the verses we read. First Timothy 6, verses 10, it says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which some were coveted after. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Hmm. The love of money. You know, the richest man in the Bible, Solomon, he said somewhere in Proverbs, that labor not to be rich. He's telling us that, you know, don't labor to be rich. Because riches make themselves wings and they fly away. Another very dangerous destiny killer is the love of money. Pastor puts it in, you know, in, uh, you know, in bracket. One thing you must realize from the get go is that having a lot of money is not a God given purpose. Being in a position where you are in control of wealth is equally not an end in itself. It is what you do with the resources God has put in your care that will determine if you fulfill your destiny. Mm. Joseph said his destiny was to keep people alive when the time of famine came. Becoming the prime minister of Egypt and being in control of the wealth of the nation was merely the means God used to achieve his purpose for Joseph. And this is clear from Joseph's statement in Genesis 50, 20, where he says, But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring it to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. So pastor says that another dangerous destiny killer is the love of money and he says um being rich is not um he says being in a position where you are in control of wealth no no he said uh having a lot of money is not a god-given purpose that no matter jesus christ said um to him um, um that where you lay your treasure there your heart is you know he said he that is faithful in little will be faithful in much you understand so what he's saying here is that it's not the amount of money you have. It's what you do with what you have that makes you that makes you fulfill destiny or not. So just because I'm rich now, I would just say, oh, oh, I'm rich, you know. So therefore, I'm fulfilling my destiny by being rich. You have to use that riches to serve the Lord your God. Otherwise, that riches, that rich, that wealth is useless. God gave you that wealth for the promotion of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, the, for the promotion of the kingdom of God. And if you do not use it to fulfill your destiny in Christ Jesus, to promote, to promote the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, that money is all dung. He uses Joseph as an example. Joseph was um, prime minister of Egypt. But we see how he used that position for the purpose of God. So when his brothers eventually revealed, when he eventually revealed himself to, their, to his brothers, he said to them, don't worry. It's because don't worry just forget what has happened in the past the reason why god put me in this position is to save to to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people so joseph used his position to fulfill the purpose of god 
Hallelujah. So that the children of Israel will not perish in Canaan where they were. You understand? So God used Joseph to save a generation. Hallelujah. So, amen. Let's go on. So if you put your focus on money, you will lose the real purpose of God in your life. Judas Iscariot was Jesus' accountant. He was so focused on the money that he did not see all the other things that he could get from Jesus Christ. While Peter was being prepared to lead the church and John was staying close to the master's chest and hearing his secrets, Judas, on the other hand, was after money. He got the money, but he lost his destiny, along with his soul. If you just follow the plan of God for your life and take your focus away from money, you will fulfill destiny and have plenty of money too. So the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. I remember Peter was saying to the sorcerer when he offered them money for the Holy Ghost, he said, your money perish with you. You're not, you know, you know, you, you are, you, I see that you are bound by an iniquity, you know? So, uh, and Jesus warned us, he said, um, you cannot serve God and mammon. You can serve God with your mammon, but you cannot serve God and mammon. Some people, they are, they, they, they are worshiping the God of money and they will do anything, whatever it takes. That's why that, that scripture said, um, the love of money, the unethical, um, the unethical purpose of, you know, to, uh, to acquire greed, the, the greed to acquire more, you know? So some people do anything to have money in Africa. For example, now there are so many ritual killers. Why are people doing such evil? Because they want money, you know, they want money. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, um, you know, things like that. And, and God is saying that if the love of your money is your motivation, some people want covetousness, very linked to covetousness. They want, uh, because of money that, you know, having illicit affairs with men or women that are older than them because they want money. For the love of money is the root of all evil. And that some have followed that path and they have realized that the end thereof is destruction. May God bring deliverance to Zion in Jesus' name. And the pastor used it, Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, he didn't focus on Jesus. Oh, it was all the money and that the, the, the blessings that people were using to bless Jesus that he was focused on because he was an accountant. He kept the money and he was a thief. He was stealing from the offering like some people do today. There's no fear of God in them. He didn't focus on Jesus Christ. He focused on, he loved money. Gehazi loved money. He came. He said, when I saw this Babylonian garment, I converted it. You know, some people are greedy 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 and you know god has put some things in place to help us to conquer greed when he says bring your money bring all the tithes into the storehouse he says give me 10 percent when i when you give me the 10 percent, i will sanctify the 90 but sometimes greed um will not allow some people to do that to honor god with their 10 percent they say it's old testament that's not true. Pastor says, when I became general of Asia, I was bothered about how, how I would take care of my family since I was leaving my job. So I thought of doing a business by the side, but God told me not to. Honestly, I was worried. But because my focus was not on money, but his will, I obeyed. And today, by the grace of, by God's grace, he has blessed me with more money than I would have had if I had gone into that business to obey. Is better than sacrifice and sometimes you know you look at the situation and god says don't do that don't do that don't do that don't do that and you're like god how will i survive because this is a very typical <laughs> way that god calls ministers he will tell you you know leave all things behind you know like he told pastor he just said don't do just serve me fully be in full-time ministry don't take up any business you know and when you look at it even christians will be telling you i don't think that's a good idea for you to quit your job but God has spoken. And when you obey, he said, did I not tell you that if you, if you, if you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Pastor then decided that it doesn't matter. You know, he used the, if I perish, I perish uh, formula of Esther. And he went all out. And when you seek first the kingdom of God, all other things will be added unto you. Amen. Money. Money is good, but the love of money will hinder God's plan for your life. Set your focus on God and his purpose for your life. Obey every instruction in the Bible. You know, these things that God, when God tells us to do something, you may think, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, you don't know why God wants you to do it. It's to deliver our soul from death. Whatsoever, Mary said to, to the servants, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Hallelujah. Do it. 
anything that when God says you should sow a seed, when God said to Abraham, take your son to the mountain and offer him as a sacrifice, Abraham did not hesitate. The very next morning, he carried the boy Isaac. The Bible says he moved with faith, knowing that even if he killed Isaac, God is well able to raise him from the dead. Can we lay our Isaac on the altar? The Bible says in Psalm 118 that we should take the, bind the sacrifice records to the altar, to the horns of the altar. You know, you want to give a, a big seed and, you know, if he's telling you, you, are you okay? This is the school fees of the children. I'm warning you, being my God has said, go ahead. You know, so you take that sacrifice, bind it records to the horns of the altar. You lay it down, you know, because God has given you that instruction, because God is able to give you, give us much more. Amen. God is bigger than what he gives. The love of money is the root of all evil. Father, please cleanse my heart from any love that I have for money in Jesus' name. Amen. Cleansing power comes from God. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit, almighty God, because you are all powerful, you are all seen, you are all known, you are the omnipotent God. All power in heaven and on earth belongs unto you. Father, Lord, we ask, Almighty God, that you deliver us from the love of money in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, when our riches increase, help us not to set our heart on it in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to be contented with such things as we have in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, again, we pray that you search us and know our hearts. Try us and know our anxiety. See if there be any wicked and ungodly way, any love of money in our heart, any pride, and lead us in the way of everlasting life. Father, have mercy on us, O oh God. According to your loving kindness and according unto the multitude of your tender mercies, wash us, almighty God, with your word. Sanctify us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness of the love of money, of pride, of laziness, of procrastination, of gluttony in the name of Jesus Christ that we may be complete and thoroughly equipped in Jesus' mighty name for the work that you have called us to do. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. As usual, I've gone over my time. I pray that this has blessed you. Forgive me if I've been talking very fast. Um, you know, may it bless you in Jesus' name. And while you're on my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. May God bless you exceedingly. I declare that you are blessed and highly favored. And I pray that all your vision and your dreams and your goals that you have written down that have not yet been fulfilled as we step into the last month of the year 2020, may the Holy Spirit fulfill them all in Jesus' name. It is written, better is a ma at the end of a matter than the beginning thereof. May God bless our December like never before. May we see miracles we've never seen before in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you very much. May God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe. And my name again is Sister Tammy Tayo. God bless you. And have a happy new month of December 2020.